Hi guys, today we have a lightweight DIY project for creating flag lights for our sim rig. So this is a fairly cost effective solution to being able to see flag lights via light strips that have an IR receiver. The strip lights we're looking at support remotes like this one and we will uh, it supports a, another type of remote this would be displayed in the documentation so you should, you should have a good idea whether your infrared strip light is supported by this project so far i've only tested this project with a set of course of competizioni but i'm using some of the flag codes from simhub so it should be supported across the board Okay, with that said, what we would need for this project is an Arduino Nano compatible board, around a 50 ohm resistor, super bright infrared LED, a breadboard for testing, some way of soldering those components together, and maybe a little project box and USB cable. Now, don't worry if I haven't been very specific about what these parts are. I'll make sure it's in the description of this video and it will also be in the description of the GitHub project that we'll be using. Okay, so with that said, let's build and test this circuit. This is a very simple circuit. We have one LED, one resistor and the Make Nano. Now I've breadboarded it up and just checked it all works as expected. Obviously I, I did a bit of programming before this. And once I'm happy with the circuit, we can now make it a bit more permanent. So I have these permaproto boards, which are quite handy. I have quite a few of them, so don't mind using it for this project. It just makes life a little easier. We align the nano on the board and then we solder the four pins on each corner. We're just doing this to make sure it stays put whilst we can solder the other parts. You can see it's dancing around here, so I'll um, put something down to make sure it stops moving around my desk. I've just got a little bit of cardboard down to make sure I don't burn a hole in my desk. A little bit fiddly, but it's not too time consuming. So then we want to do all of the pins that we will be using. I've just done the entire row because it's just a little easier rather than working out which pins we're using. And sometimes soldering, I might get a bit gunked up, so give it a good clean regular basis. And then it should be a case of just going through every pin, not leaving the solder to fall down through the hole too much. But you want to make sure that you don't have any cold joints. You might see a little bit of migration to neighboring holes, but as long as it's in the same row, you should be okay. And then we solder on the resistor. I'm doing this from uh, the GPIO 10 pin. Make sure we're happy with that. And then we put the LED with the anode side, which is the longer leg in the positive hole and the other one in the ground. So that joins with the ground pin. I bend the legs over because it just makes life a little bit easier. And then we can just snip these all off. And you can see what it looks like in the project box.
So on the software side, things are a little more complicated, but we can talk you through that. So we need to download Arduino IDE. This will allow us to compile this software that we're going to use for this project. And the easiest way to do that is through the Windows Store, Microsoft Store. So grab the IDE, install it, and then we can open it. With Arduino IDE open, we need to go to Manage Libraries. And from here, we search for Arduino JSON and make sure that's installed. The version we have installed isn't on the list because we already have it installed but it's the version that's highlighted under installed. The same will go for IR remote, which is the other library we use in this project. And this we're using version 3.3.0, which again, you won't find in the drop down list because we already have it installed. With both of those installed, we need to head on over to GitHub, back to our project, and download the sketch. We have a release for this sketch, so we just grab the release version. So you see releases on the right hand side, click that, grab the latest release, download, open up the folder where the zip file is, drag the contents of the zip file into a location of your choosing. You need to rename the folder to SimHub IR flags, um, but I already have one called that, so I'm going to just rename that to the version that I had deployed there. Open up that folder and double click on the INO file. That will open up Arduino again. And you can now see we're presented with the SimHub IR flags project. Now, we're not going to be able to do much without drivers for our um, Nano. So the easiest thing to do there is to go off to the place that you bought your um, Nano from, find the download link and download it from whatever website that would be. In this case, it's a Chinese website. There's a little bit of configuration you can do with this project. It may or may not be necessary depending on your remote, but that's all found under the header. But just to make sure you can compile first, we select the Arduino Nano and the COM port that you're using for your project device. We click the Take then that one sh should work for us. We should also be able to open up the project. But first, we're going to compile it. So if we control R to compile, if it compiles OK, it should be green. And then we have these flags that you can change. So you can change it to the 24 button remote or the 44 key remote. We have the IR. Um, send pin that we're using. In our case, we're using pin 10, but you might be using a different one. You can enable or disable the power on feature. By default, it's disabled because on my 44 button um, LED strip, that fails hard. So once you've done all that, Control U will upload your sketch to your device. If you open the serial monitor, you can then check to make sure but everything blows up fine. You should have a message similar to this if all is working. It takes a little bit of time to load that, but it should all show up for you. We then head on over to SimHub, go to Settings and Plugins. 
find the custom serial devices plugin and make sure that is enabled. We've got quite a few plugins here, but we're only interested in custom serial device at this point. So we enable that. You may have to reload SIM hub to get it to show up, but it should now show up on your left hand nav, just below the base shakers. From here, open up the custom serial device. Again, select your COM ports, make sure you've got logging enabled and automatic reconnect enabled. Select the frequency of updates, usually 5, 10 FPS or changes only. Some um, strip lights don't like changes only. So again, you're going to have to experiment with that a little bit. we go back to our project we open up the gist which is in the description of the readme go to edit our message select computed values use javascript and paste in that javascript under raw results you should then see the flag and that's all there is to that freeze your changes enable the device and then you should start to see some data being logged, as you can see here. If you select the changes only, you'll see a lot less in the way of updates. And it might be worth disabling logging when you're using this as a production device. Because it's going to be logging a lot of data and none of it is really useful. Now you can test out your settings from SimHub by playing the game, running in replay mode, and then replaying that replay. So you can record your replay. And that's what I've done here. You can see the current flag value is R, which is what a set of course of competizione sends us when we are just about to start a race, which is red flag. If we forward on a little bit, we can see when we start the race, that goes to green flag. And these color codes will correspond to your device. If you're not seeing those changes, then you may have to adapt your settings. Now with that all um, set up, let's show a quick demo of what that all looks like. Now, it's never going to be a replacement for the bespoke devices that are created for this purpose. There is a bit of latency when it comes to the the IR um, connection and some controller boxes that come with these strips really don't like being flooded with commands. But it gives us a cost-effective light cluster and it definitely shows us at a glance what flag we are currently displaying in the race. So there we are. We have to some degree successfully created a infrared controlled flag light system using SimHub, a cheap light strip and a Arduino Nano. So all in, this project is less than £20 for uh, a simple strip light. For the ones I have, which are two 4 meter strip lights, that's more like a £30 project. But it's still cheaper than the, the little boxes you have. Of course, it doesn't quite mimic those individually addressable LEDs as well. So you can't have... Uh, interesting patterns on your, your light strip uh, but it gives you a basis for having uh, a secondary indicator showing what flag is currently out latency wise it's not too bad 
I mean, we 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 notice maybe uh, about around a two hundred milli um, latency on the the strip light I have here, but that's maximum. Mostly, it's between one and two hundred milliseconds. Just pretty quick. I mean, you know when a a flag is out, which is the the main thing. Um, being notified a fraction of a second late isn't not really a deal breaker for most games. So if you, you have a strip light available and you have some of the components listed here, you might be able to effectively build this solution for next to nothing, which would be a good way of adding to your rig without adding to the cost of your rig. The project I created for this uses a couple of libraries, uh, the Arduino IR remote library, which you can find a link for in the GitHub repository I created. And the other one is the Arduino JSON library. That was more an optional component for this, but I quite liked the simplicity of parsing JSON as opposed to a uh, handwriting line format. I am a little guilty of running through the instructions quite quickly. So I'll make sure they're also in the description for this video. And I've also linked in a couple of places, things like how to get set up with SimHub, which I've done in another video. So if you like this little project video, then please give it the thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment. I'd love to see if you've implemented something similar. And um, yeah, if you do use my code, I would be grateful to know about it just so I know it's worthwhile continuing to improve it. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and until next time, bye-bye.